Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Give it a moment for everybody to find a pew. Suppose everybody is well on this quite bright Sunday morning. So bright, in fact, I can't see. Bring my blind now. There we go. Good morning, Glynis. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Jill. Welcome. The sun's shining in. What a beautiful morning it is. More people joining in. Let's have a look. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Jane. Doctor Who's. No, it's actually it's actually a uh, Harry Potter scarf, Gryffindor. But close, Kevin. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Alan. I think I've got everybody. If I haven't mentioned your name, I do apologise. They were scrolling quite quickly. Uh, if you're watching through the magic of uh, the internet and you're not using Facebook because you're not a Facebook uh, user, uh, which is absolutely fine. You just you may name not may not show up, but welcome to you as well. And if you're watching this afterwards, so it's not actually uh, half ten. You're watching it later because you you know had a busy weekend and decided you needed to lie in or. Something you don't think drew you away. Good morning to you also. Thank you for joining me in my humble office. Um, our service of morning prayer today will be familiar to you all. I am going to take one moment because I have to close my blind even more. It seems sacrilege to close your blinds when the sun is shining so brightly, but winter sun really makes it difficult to see your screen um, when it's streaming in. But it's thankful and praise the Lord that we do have it. Uh, good morning, Judith. Good morning, Simon. So without more, without any more dithering or without any more weight, let us begin our service today on... Uh, this lovely morning. Let's just take a moment, wherever we are, get comfortable, relax, take ourselves away from the world, the busy bustle, bustle the hectic schedules, the to-do lists. Let's come together in a time of worship, a worship time of prayer, a time of praise and thanksgiving. Though we may not be together in the same room, we are together in spirit. Through the marvels of technology, we come together. You should have all received your service sheets, uh, so hopefully you can follow along and join in on the bold bits. Be as loud as you want or as quiet. The Lord hears us from our hearts and from our mouths. So, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may give ourselves to the service of God. Come now to a time of confession. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ. Let us take a moment to confess our sins in our hearts and minds in penitence and faith.
we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayers. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our, our God. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the domination of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of the risen sun. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day. You have made and praised you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gifts of this new day, so might the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we now come to our first hymn. Our first hymn this morning is God of Grace and God of Glory. And my first technical challenge of the day. Beautiful. I have to take a moment and relax and listen to that beautiful hymn. I'm sure many of you were singing along. I uh, have to resist to do the uh, old conducting this because it just, that kind of beautifully way it was played, it makes you really feel the music. I hope it touched each and every one of us. 
So now on to our psalm for the day. And the psalm for today is Psalm 123. Supplication of mercy and a song of ascents. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who has enthroned in the heavens. All the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of the maid to the hands of the mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul how has been more our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease and of the contempt of the proud. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, rise in the hearts this day, enfold us in the brightness of your love and bear us with the last of heaven's horizon for your love's sake. Amen. We now come to our readings for today, and the reading and the Old Testament reading is from Judges chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. After Ehud died, so the Lord sold them to the hand of the king Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor, and the commander of the armies of Sizer, who lived in the Heresheth Hagorim. And then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly twenty years. At, the t- at this, that time Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lepidith, was judging Israel. She used, used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Raham and Bethel in the high country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abim and Kadesh, in Napapli, Nef, uh, Neftali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor, Bring ten thousand from the tribe of Naphtali and, tri- and the tribe of Zebulun. I saw I will draw out Caesarea and to the general of Jabin's army to meet you on the Wadi Kishon and his chariots and his troops, and I will give him to your hand. This is the word of the Lord. And our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. I don't need to write to you about a time or date when this will happen. You surely know that the of the Lord's return will be like a thief coming at night. People will think they are safe and secure, but destruction will suddenly strike them like the pains of a woman about to give birth, and they won't escape. My dear friends, you don't live in darkness so that the day won't surprise you like a thief. You belong to the light and live in the day. We don't live in the night or belong to the dark. Others may sleep, but we shall stay awake and be alert. People sleep during the night and even get drunk. But we belong to the day, so we must stay sober and let our faith and love be like a suit of armour. Our firm hope that will be saved in our help, in our helmet. <clears throat> God doesn't intend to punish us, but wants us to be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for us, so that we could live with him, whether we are alive or dead, when he comes. That's why you must encourage and help each other, just as you are already doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before we have our gospel reading, as always, we have our second hymn. All nations of the world.
and our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents came forward, saying, Master, you have handed over to us two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received just one talent came also forward, saying, Master, I knew you were both a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, you knew, did you, that I weep where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you thought to invest my money with a... Then you ought to have invested my money with a banker. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent, taking the talent from him, and he gave it to the one with ten talents. For all who have, more will be given, and those who have abundance. But for those who have nothing, even they will be taken, that will be taken away. As for the worthless slave, throw him into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, we come before you. Let your words speak to us. May they inspire us. May they touch our hearts. May you speak to us in these times and guide us. Amen. So when I looked at the readings uh, for this morning, I thought, ooh, we've got a parable. Excellent, I do like a good parable. And I then saw it was this parable, the parable of the talents. And my heart, I will admit, was a little bit, hmm, it's not one of my favourites. I wouldn't put it in my top ten parables. It's not one of those ones that generally stands out that says, in any situation in our day and today lives, that we say, oh look, I know I'm going to quote the parable of the, tal of the talents. It's one of those ones we kind of like to brush aside. Because it doesn't always fit. We, we, maybe it challenges us. I know it challenges me. It gives me a different picture than I would normally have expected. It doesn't fit in with the flow. It kind of saying to me in initial thoughts that if you have lots of everything, and you are going to get more. And if you have less, then you are going to get that taken from you and you are going to be cast out. That doesn't fit in with the Beatitudes. That doesn't fit in with Jesus' other teaching. So what do I think? I tend to take it and hide it and move it away and let not, oh, I don't want to have challenging thoughts on that. I, I'll come back to that at another time. And then the Lord teaches us and said, right, James, you've not looked at that one enough. You've not reflected on that one enough. So next time you're doing a service, I'm going to make sure that it's that reading that you get. That's the way it feels for me sometimes. I don't mind because I am quite stubborn and I am kind of uh, pushing things and putting them aside. 
The King of Procrastination uh, would be my title. We all don't like doing the things we don't like doing, and we put them to the bottom of our to-do list. So what is this passage saying to me this morning? Well, it's saying to me, it talks of talents. It's that mix of words. Talents in this term is, a t is, a, is discussing money, wealth, belongings. When we think in a modern world of talents, of a talent we are given, a skill, an ability to do something. And it that's what first stands, first stands out. Because really for me, it doesn't necessarily have to be financial. It could be about our skills and our talents. I reflect on recent events in, our, in my life. Recently, uh, you may have seen in the press that my current company of employment for the last 23, almost 24 years, Lloyds Banking Group, <gasps> I'm, I work for a bank, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, I did do my confession earlier. Um, but Lloyds Banking Group have had a reshuffle once again. They have taken people and they've moved them into different roles and unfortunately there are spaces where there aren't roles for some people. It's probably about the 25th in my uh, reshuffle in my 24 years of service. It happens within all companies. Uh, by the time I've been with a company for so long, you sort of get a little bit numb to it. You just go with the flow. There is an element of going on faith at that, but that's a whole different sermon. But the key for this one is, it's really interesting to see the three types of people we see in this parable in those particular times. Because what I have seen is I have seen people who have been given jobs and they lean, they rush forward and they, they embrace them and they work really hard and they are really challenged uh, and, they, and they bloom. In great, in, uh, great adversity, even when the situation is changing, the rewards come to them. There are those who kind of sit in the middle and just get on with doing what the day-to-day -day stuff and they don't let it get to them too much, but they deliver on what they should be doing, so they're kind of doing a good job. And then there are those which stand that sit there and take umbrage. They get angry and cross. How dare this big thing happen? How dare these things change? How dare this, this happen to me? I'm good at this, and I know I'm not good at that, but it doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to do the least I possibly can because I'm not happy with what I've got. I'm not happy with the way this is all happening and I'm going to sit here. And I would almost say they would sit and sulk. And when it comes out and when decisions are made for future roles, be it a surprise that those who have stepped forward and stepped up are rewarded. Those who have carried on doing a job are generally sitting where they're sitting. And those who have stepped back and really not tried, taken umbrage, challenged and not been happy, been lazy, kind of kicked back, are those who are in a situation where they may not wish to be. It's always a challenge within our day-to-day -day working life when you see it. It's better to be an observer than to be that person who might be sitting there going, well, I deserve better than this. I know I'm really good. And as I should be, I'm going to sit here stubbornly. That is not in a place you want to be. And sometimes you can be there and not realise it. Until somebody holds a mirror up to you and says, look, are you really showing goodwill? Are you really showing hard work? It is a time and thing to think about. It's a sign of my age, but one of the great things myself and my wife, Jo, enjoy doing on a Saturday evening is sitting down and good, watching a good, a good sit program called Strictly Come Dancing. I know, it's the greyness, I'm clearly getting on in age. But we sit and we watch it. 
And we were watching it last night and I was thinking of this sermon and another another thing I saw, which was reflected on this passage. I saw J.J. Chalmers. Now, J.J. Chalmers, to me, before Strictly, I kind of knew him from Evictus Games briefly, but I didn't really know much about him. One of the things I really enjoy about having these, so uh, people call them so-called celebrities, but these newer celebrities or less limelight celebrities, is because you really start to get to know people. So I looked down and I, I, you know, I looked him up because I saw that, if you don't know if you saw, please go and watch it if you did. J.J. Chalmers, apart from being a soldier, going out to Afghan and, and fighting for, against uh, oppression, against and uh, for our country, for freedoms, something which we remembered only recently on Remembrance Sunday and on Armistice Day. But though he was a soldier who was injured by an IED. Now, I have not been injured in an IED. I may have been injured on large amounts of good food, lack of exercise. But I tell you, that man did a jive last, last night that may not have been in the rings of tens and nines and fantastic scores, but was one of complete pride. He did it in a uniform. He had permission to do so. He did it to, to the bugle boy. It was a beautiful dance. It was beautiful because he gave 100%. He has always given 100%. But in his journey, he hasn't always been 100% positive. He struggled and Invictus Games brought him back. That's part of his story. But to watch him last night, he was at the bottom of the leaderboard. His score wasn't the greatest. But for me, he was a winner because he was there. He was proud. He brought tears to my eyes because it made me reflect. This man who had given so much to defend what is right and what is good. Who had been injured and fallen into darkness had fought back. And he had then taken a step to do something which takes a lot of skill, dedication, training and extreme effort. And something I could pro nowhere near get any close to. And he went out there proudly and he delivered. Amazing. But then the question we ask ourselves is, what does this mean for our Christian lives? And that's the important message we look to this morning. So in our work lives, in our social lives, we can see examples. But in our Christian lives, who are we? What are we doing? Are we going out there? Are we taking the talents that God has given us, the riches he has given us, the things that he has provided for us? Are we taking them in great value? Are we going forward and trying to double them and increase them? Are we just kind of sitting there in the day to go, yeah, we've got our talents and we're just kind of doing it and we're on a good place and we're not pushing the, we're not pushing the envelope because that's not what we do, but we're steady or are we sitting back sitting on our laurels quarreling with the lord saying well i'm not happy with my lot in life i i'm not thinking you're doing the right thing look at the suffering look at this and look at that are we a bit afraid are we burying our heads in the sand as we're along with our talent are we sitting along sulking are we thinking well, I'll give back what I've received and that will be fine. Clearly this, par this parable tells us it is not. We should step forward and step up, not step back and hide in fear. Some thoughts for this Sunday morning. Where are you? And if you think you're in one place, maybe talk with a friend's family, May be just look in the mirror yourself and ask those hard questions. Am I really where I think I am? Because I tell you not, that man who was, had received the one talent, he did not expect what was given. He did not see past the end of his nose. He did not be aware of what was happening. He was just embroiled in the fear watching out for number one 
thinking and reveling in what was, could, should or maybe should have been, rather than potentially stepping up. We have all been there. We have all been those moments. And it is why the Lord provides these parables at times when we need to hear them, in times when we need to reflect on them, and times when we really shouldn't push them under the carpet. Amen. We now come to declare our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we now come to a time of prayer. So, hands together, eyes closed. Let us sit or kneel to pray. Almighty God, we come before you. We bring our prayers to you, knowing you hear our thoughts, our hearts, desires. We come not with a list, just for ourselves. We come with hope. We kneel before you. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for all the talents that we are given, all the resources that you provide, that we do not squander it, that do we do not bury ourselves, our heads, our talents in the dirt, that we step forward that we give what we can give, we deliver what we can deliver, that we can go forward in your name, that fear may not take hold, that greed and selfishness, self-preservation, laziness, disdain, hatred, anger, We cast these aside and pray for your grace, your inspiration, your love beyond us all. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray. We pray for this world in this time of turmoil, when up seems like down, when left seems like right. Decisions are being made. Choices that affect us all. We pray for wisdom in those in positions of power. We pray for maturity in those who govern. Let them not fall and act like children but stand like wise men and women to guide us through the darkness so we may rejoice in the light. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those inspired by you those who work in medical care and support, scientific, making breakthroughs for vaccines, 
to fight against disease. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, be it at home or in hospital, be it physical, mental, be it the everyday things we now rejoice in having rather than it being the fear or concerns around COVID. It is a strange times in which we live, Lord, when we would happier be ill with something other than COVID, which has given fear, anxiety and concern and affected so many. Lord, we pray for Neil McIntyre, for Eva Wilkinson, Nan Howarth, for John, Craig Bevington, Andrew Whittington, Angela and Katie, Barbara Holness, Marlene Kilcross, Nia Lois and Sarah Collis, and for Mavis. May your healing touch be upon them. May your strength be within them. May your patience surround them. And may your love embrace them. And may your mercy and grace heal them. Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those no longer with us. Our time in this planet, in this universe, in these corporeal bodies, is but short. A blink, almost a moment. But you offer the gift of eternal life. That the end is not the end, but the beginning of something new and exciting. An amazing hope and an amazing promise. To those who simply believe and follow you. So we pray for all those families. Who are left with a void where grief is seeping in. Wrap your arms around them, fill them with joy and love. Let them remember those moments. Celebrate the lives of their loved ones, now departed. Embrace the grieving process. And know that their loved ones will be in their hearts and with them forever. We pray for Joan Conrad. We pray for John Owens. Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for this coming week, the challenges it may bring, the opportunities that may be available, the changes we may experience, the moments and how we respond. Let this parable this morning inspire us, make us reflect on our lives so that we may live our lives better, be it in our working life, in our social lives or in our Christian life. Some would say they are all of one. Some struggle with aspects of each. But it is a journey. It is a marathon and not a sprint. So let us take it day by day with your support, your love, your patience, your grace and mercy. Guide us through the coming weeks, the challenges ahead. We bring these prayers to you. In the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And it seems to have flown past, but we now come to our final hymn. Beautifully, beautiful song for us to finish our worship on this morning. Uh, a deep question I have for you all. I'm sure you all hit that high note right at the end. Marvel that you can anyone who can get that high. I'm sure our sopranos would be knocking that out of the park if we were together with our choir in All Saints Darsbury this morning. I know I wouldn't be getting that high. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for sharing in our worship. May your week be beautiful. May you be filled with joy. May your hearts be filled with hope, not fear. May it not anger, no disputes or arguments. Let us have a great week. As Advent approaches, as Christmas draws near, let us all rejoice. So the blessing the Lord bless us and watch over us, and the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. We will be back, uh, myself, uh, at four o'clock today. Uh, I thank you for joining me this morning. It is always an honour and pleasure to have you with me, uh, to share in these services and rejoice together. Uh, may the, the sun is shining. I will now lift up my blind and let it stream. It is good to see the light shining in our days. May it inspire us. May we be touched uh, and may you be blessed. Uh, God bless. Uh, love to all and keep, yourself, keep yourselves safe. 
uh, and may you be well in these troubled times. And don't be afraid to reach out if you need prayer, if you need support. We are there as a family, as always. God bless you all and see you all soon. Four o'clock, if not before. Take care. God bless.